Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Today's class will start with cycle analysis. What we will do in cycle analysis is uh, we will look at the Brighton cycle which is mostly followed by all the uh, air breathing propulsion systems and look at what happens to non dimensional thrust uh, ISP and other parameters uh, if you vary the Mach number. Okay. That is the primary motivation for doing this and we will be able to derive some simple relationships and show where the optimal lie, value of uh, non dimensional thrust or specific impulse lies. Okay. Now, firstly we will start with ramjet. As it is the uh, simplest system with us with no moving parts and other things. So, we will start with this and this will be a one dimensional analysis. That is the variation is only along the axis of the uh, ramjet. Okay. So, <coughs> just to refresh uh, we have an intake for the ramjet. Okay, this is a schematic of a ramjet. You have air coming in uh, from the left, and uh, you have fuel added. This portion is the intake. All this is the combustion chamber. This is the CD nozzle. Now, let me call uh, points, let me indicate points here. I will call this 0, I will call this 2, 3, and 4. Okay. Now, correspondingly, I will put this information on a TS diagram as to what happens to. Uh, the cycle on a TS diagram. Let us look at it. This is zero. 0 to 2 is compression, isentropic compression. We are assuming ideal processes here. 0 to 2 is isentropic compression, 2 to 3 is heat addition in the uh, combustion chamber here, and 3 to 4 is expansion through the nozzle. Okay, fine. <coughs> now, we had derived uh, some time earlier the thrust equation, and we had seen that for an air breathing system the thrust is f is equal to m dot a into I will call it in terms of uh, the quantity here I will indicate it by v naught and sorry m dot a into 1 plus f 
v4 that is uh, the exit velocity minus v0 plus the pressure thrust a4 into p4 minus p0 okay so this is the exit velocity this is the entry velocity and this is the pressure thrust typically the pressure thrust part is uh, very small compared to the uh, convective flux thrust so uh, in this analysis we will neglect this part okay so we will consider that the nozzle is optimal the flow in the nozzle is optimally expanded So, P4 will be equal to P0. So, this part goes to 0. Essentially, we are left with only the convective flux. Okay. <coughs> now, we I can rewrite this as F is equal to M dot A V0. Now further, uh, I want to simplify it. What we know is that velocities are related to Mach number and speed of sound. So I'll use that information. I know V naught is equal to M naught A naught and V four is equal to m4 into a4 i also know that a0 is nothing but and a4 is okay so I know the relationship between the velocity in terms of Mach number and then in terms of temperature. Now we will make an assumption here. If you see here A4 corresponds to the velocity of sound at condition 4. At condition 4 you realize that we have added uh, fuel and burned the fuel and therefore the composition of the gases at 4 and 0 are not the same. So typically speaking I should have written different notations for these two right. But in this analysis we will assume that uh, as the gases pass through the uh, device there is no change to it to either gamma or r okay. So assuming R and gamma to be the same for exhaust and exhaust gases and ambient air. then we can do the further simplification of this. So I can now write F is equal to M dot A. I know that uh, V naught is nothing but M naught A naught Okay. 
Now, if you remember our discussions uh, earlier in the course, uh, in all the air breathing propulsion, we said that if kerosene is the fuel uh, or any hydrocarbon is the fuel, then F the fuel air ratio that is m dot f by m dot a for stoichiometry is around 6, 7. Okay. So, this is pretty much less than 1. So, we can neglect f in comparison to 1. Okay. So, f is very much less than 1. So, I can rewrite my equation as f is equal to m dot a m not a not so this goes to 0 I will get m 4 into here I know that a 4 is gamma r t 4 and a not is gamma r t not what I will do is I will take out the gamma r part because of this assumption and I will be left with m 4 by m not into under root okay so we have been able to express this in terms of ratio of exit to inlet conditions now what we'll do is what is known as cascading of pressures and temperatures we'll try to cascade from the nozzle side towards the uh, inlet and see what we can get out of this. We will do cascading of pressures and temperatures and see what we can get out of it. Firstly, let me take T four by T naught. T four by T naught. I can write it as T four by T T four into T T four by T T three into T T three by T T two into T T two by T naught or I will call this T T naught to T T naught by T naught. The subscript T here indicates total. Okay. So, total or stagnation conditions. Okay. So, what we have done is we have expressed it as a ratio of static to stagnation and then stagnation of 4 to 3, 3 to 2, 2 to 0 and then uh, stagnation to static. Okay. So, all these will cancel out and you will get T 4 by T naught. <coughs> so, let us look at what are uh, these values. This is nothing but local static to stagnation condition which we can express in terms of Mach number. This, what does this represent? 
T T 4 by T T 3 is just by this it represents flow through the nozzle. Similarly, T T 3 by T T 2, 3 and 2 it represents flow through the combustor. This represents flow through diffuser or intake. and this again is local static to stagnation. Okay. <clears throat> now, for an isentropic flow what happens to this ratio T T 3 by T T 4? If we assume the flow through the nozzle to be isentropic, then both these temperatures are same. So, you get this ratio to be 1. Okay. Then uh, again flow through intake, this is also 1, fine. You are uh, left with now 3 things, this flow through combustor and local static to stagnation. This the first and the last one we can express it in terms of Mach number. Okay. Uh, we will do that right now. So, this would be 1 by 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m 4 square okay, into 1 and uh, again this would be one plus gamma minus one by two m naught square okay so lastly we are left with flow through the combustor Now, let me call this ratio T T 3 by T T 2 as I will call it tau b. Okay. Now, I can also express that this tau b as T T 3 by T naught into T naught T naught cancels out you get the same thing. Uh, this is equal to T naught by <coughs> okay. T naught by T T 2 this is flow through the intake which is 1. Okay. So, this is this is 1. So, you get <coughs> this we can express in terms of Mach number okay. and let me call T T naught by T naught as 
theta naught. Okay. So if I call T T naught by T naught as theta naught, I'll get tau b as equal to T T three by T naught into one by theta naught. I'll also call this quantity. I'll define T T three by T naught as theta b. This is nothing but the ratio of uh, the exit temperature of the combustor to the ambient temperature. Okay. Now this is uh, this is under the designer's control. Right. So, therefore, this is a very important parameter as we will see later on in the uh, discussions. So, T T T T T 3 is temperature at the exit of the combustor and T naught is the in inlet uh, temperature. Okay. So, we will call this theta b. So, I get tau b is this is nothing but theta b by theta naught. Okay. So, if I substitute back for this T 4 by T naught all this, I will get the following expression. If you see here T T 3 by T T 2 is nothing but tau b which is nothing but theta b by theta naught. Okay. Into flow through intake which is 1 into the last part uh, 1 plus gamma minus 1 by m naught square. I have defined this ratio as theta naught here. So, I will put that down. So, finally, we get T4 by T naught is equal to theta b by 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m4 square. Okay. Now, we have been able to derive this expression for T 4 by T naught by cascading temperatures. Let us now do the same exercise by cascading pressures try and find out what is the relationship for Mach numbers. Okay. <coughs> so, similarly We get P4 by PT4, PT4 by PT3, PT3 by PT2, PT2 by PT0 into PT0 by P0. Okay. Again, uh, T indicates the subscript T here indicates total conditions or stagnation conditions. So, this is a ratio of pressures 
static to stagnation the first and the last terms are uh, ratio of stat local static to stagnation pressure one is at the exit one is at the inlet okay now this is a uh, flow through diffuser flow through combustor and flow through intake right Now, this pressure term here, the pressure term here, this indicates the efficiency across the nozzle. Okay, this indicates the efficiency across the uh, combustor, and this indicates the efficiency across the intake. So, I'll call them as this is nozzle efficiency eta n. This is burner efficiency b eta b and lastly this is diffuser efficiency eta d okay the other two terms can be expressed in terms of mach number okay so we get p4 by p0 is equal to 1 by 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m4 square gamma by gamma minus 1 into eta n into eta b into eta diffuser or intake into <coughs> 1 by o, gamma minus 1 by 2 okay so this is the expression that we have what is p4 by p0 remember when we started out we made an assumption saying that p4 by p0 is equal to 1 optimally expanded flow so P4 by P0 is okay. <coughs> so you get one plus gamma minus one by two M4 square. this is the expression that we get by cross multiplying <coughs> now i'll put all these three ratios into one value of eta and i'll express let us say eta is equal to eta n into eta eta b into eta d to the power of gamma minus 1 by gamma if i do it this way then when i plug in for this it will all be a relation of gamma by gamma minus 1 so i can remove the powers and look at what we have here okay So we get finally 
1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m 4 square must be equal to eta into okay the powers get cancelled out so you are left with this equation <coughs> uh, just to remind you we had done this uh, exercise earlier uh, the relative values of all these efficiencies eta n typically it is uh, flow through the nozzle it varies between 0.96 to 0.98 and uh, eta burner this varies between 9.4 to 9.6 and diffuser remember we had indicated this to be a strong function of inlet Mach number if you have a large inlet Mach number you are bound to get lower efficiency because of flow being processed through oblique or normal shocks okay so you will get a lower efficiency if you have high Mach number but as you go down in Mach number you will get a higher efficiency. So, <coughs> if you combine the worst case scenario of all this and remember that it is a multiplication sign you will end up uh, getting variation eta varies from 0.96 0.97 for gamma equal to 1.4 okay so the worst case scenario is this 0.84 and the best is 0.97 we will discuss about this when we talk about what is the lowest Mach number in which a ramjet can operate <coughs> now coming back to this equation here this was our relationship that we were trying to find in terms of Mach numbers what is this term here this is nothing but theta naught right so we get 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m naught square is nothing but theta naught so from here you get m naught is equal to 2 by gamma minus 1 theta naught minus 1 and similarly if you put this theta naught here you can get an expression for m4 as So now we have the relationship for m4 by m0 and t4 by t0 in our, in our earlier thrust relationship we were searching for a relationship for t4 by t0 and m4 by m0 we have got both of them let us plug it in and see what happens. So our relationship m4 by m0 is equal to eta theta0 minus 1 
divided by theta naught minus 1 and similarly T4 by T naught was theta B to 1 plus okay. What is this term? This is nothing but this term here, right. So, it is nothing but theta, theta naught. So, you get theta b is equal to t4 by t naught is equal to theta b by eta theta naught, okay. This is because we have shown that 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m4 square is nothing but eta theta naught. So, we have both the ratios that we were looking for. So, our thrust equation becomes f is equal to m dot a a naught m naught we had m 4 by m naught that is nothing but theta b I will firstly put t 4 by t naught theta theta naught into This is the expression that we get for thrust in a ramjet. Okay. Now <coughs> we like to have non-dimensional numbers. Okay. We can easily see that we can non-dimensionalize this thrust if we divide by m dot a a naught throughout. Okay. M Mach number is not a function of. Uh, I mean, it's a non-dimensional value. And all the other things, theta b, eta, and theta naught are also non-dimensional values. Okay, so I get f by So, this is the expression for non dimensional thrust okay. Now, we have found out what is the expression for non dimensional thrust in terms of theta b which is nothing but the ratio of combustor exit temperature to ambient temperature and a function of Mach number and efficiencies. Okay. Theta naught is a function of Mach number and eta is efficiency and m naught is again Mach number itself. So, the only input parameter that we have under our control is through theta b and the flight Mach number. Okay. The rest of it is uh, system determined that is theta or the efficiency is system determined. Okay. Now, we have been able to do this, we also need another parameter right. What is the other parameter of interest to us? Huh? Specific fuel consumption. Uh, in this case, we look at uh, ISP which is 1 over specific fuel consumption.
there is nothing but specific impulse and it is 1 over SFC we define ISP as ISP is nothing but thrust per unit mass flow rate of fuel okay. So <coughs> what we have got is an expression for F by M dot A and now I have a definition for ISP like this fine. What we have to look at is we have spent a considerable effort trying to derive that expression we have to take a little more benefit out of it. So what we will do is we will multiply this suitably and find out if we can use that expression okay. So I can write this as F by M dot A into A naught into A naught divided by F where F is nothing but fuel air ratio M dot F by M dot A. So if you put M dot F by M dot A here this M dot A and this M dot A cancels out and A naught and A naught cancel out you get F by M dot F. <coughs> so we have been able to get this expression that we have derived here okay. So if you want ISP now the only parameter that we need to uh, derive an expression for is this F here right okay fine we will do that right now. We will uh, derive an expression for F by looking at the energy balance across the combustor okay. So using energy balance across combustor that is what you are putting in is chemical energy associated with the fuel that is given by M dot F that which is the mass flow rate of fuel into the calorific value of the fuel okay. Q indicates This must be what must this be equal to the sensitive sensible enthalpy rise across the combustor okay. So that is given by M dot A into The 1 plus F here indicates that you are looking at the combined mass flow rate of fuel and air when you are looking at conditions at 3 okay. <coughs> now again using our this is a little weird we are trying to get an expression for F and what we are trying to do is we will try and see if we can eliminate this just to make sure that our algebra is a little more cleaner we will do this F you can compare it with 1 always in engineering approximations you tend to compare it with a known value and then if it is very small compared to that value you can neglect it okay. So you cannot neglect it arbitrarily but you have to make a comparison with some other quantity. So if you compare F with respect to 1 we have seen that F is very much smaller to 1 so you can neglect this part here. So this goes out we get M dot F Q is equal to C P is common for both 
uh, the burnt gases as well as the incoming air. So, I can take it out. Now, I need to let me divide both these by T naught. Okay. So, I can write this as m dot a C p T naught right. I have divided and multiplied by T naught. So, what is T T 3 by T naught? When we derive expression for f by m dot a, what is this expression? This is nothing but theta b, right? And uh, what is this? <coughs> T T 2 by T naught is nothing but T T 2 by T T not into T T not by T not, right. What is this ratio? This is flow through intake, this is 1 and this is what is this? Theta not. So, you get if you substitute back in here, you will get m dot a c p t naught into theta b minus theta naught. So, finally, we can get an expression for f by combining these two. We can write f is equal to C p t naught by q into theta b minus theta naught and therefore, our expression for ISP you see here this expression for ISP that I have if I divide the ISP by A naught I get a non dimensional quantity what is the unit of ISP ISP is unit is what Newton per kg second right. What is Newton? Newton is kg meter per second square you get kg by per second. So, what you will get is meter per second. Okay. So, if you split it uh, if you simplify further you will get ISP unit as meter per second A naught is nothing but speed of sound which is also in meters per second. So, you will get a non dimensional quantity if you divide it by A naught. And if we substitute the expression that we derived for f by m dot a a naught, we will get this as eta b eta theta naught into eta theta naught minus 1.
okay. This is the expression for ISP by A0, okay. We will stop here, we will continue in the next class. Thank you.